Hello and welcome back to Legends of the Dead. In between episodes, an interesting idea was suggested where we should convert the capital of our vassals' realms to our culture. Now, I think it's a good idea. However, the reason given isn't the reason I think it was a good idea. The reason given is that, in theory, it should be possible if a vassal has a capital which is a different culture, for that vassal to convert to your culture. Now, I think that in theory, that's sound, but I've never actually seen a vassal do it, or I've never consciously seen a vassal do it. I've never seen a vassal convert from one culture to another via the capital decision. So, when the player owns a capital which is a different culture, a decision pops up in the decisions menu which allows you to convert to local culture. The logic is the AI would do the same thing. Anyway. Why do I think it's a good idea if I don't think that's going to work? Well, if you think about how the AI spends money, then actually having the capitals of your vassals converted makes a lot of sense. Also, if you think about where uh, development bonuses go, having the capitals of your vassals converted makes sense because the likelihood is that those are going to be the highest development provinces that you don't personally own, right? So if we go and have a look in here, we have a look at uh, Finland, we would think, now I don't know if this is gonna actually true right now because everything had really low development to start with, I would think that this is going to have higher development and it's going to have, have a higher monthly change due to being, um, well I mean look at this, they have centralization, due to being the capital. So right now they have centralization which is a stewardship lifestyle perk which gives them 0.3 uh, extra development growth in the capital per month. If we converted their capital, we now have a province which is um, gaining extra uh, development every single month. That's fantastic. That's the kind of thing you want to do. Let's go have a look somewhere else. Bajermaland. Okay. Up here. Uh, their development is actually much slower, so theirs is a bad example. So, Finland, potentially good. How about Vladimir? So, in Timorovo. So, they have development growth going up, and it, there you go, Capital County. A little bonus on the development growth there. You can kind of see what I'm saying. It's not a huge amount extra, but it's better than just a random province being converted, right? If we convert the capitals of our vassals as like our first priority, those should be the ones that are getting the most development and uh, growth bonuses and therefore are going to give us the best value when we get into looking at tech and uh, having a look at the average development of late Norse counties, right? That's going to go up and up and up as we convert more of those provinces. Um, actually, a good way of checking um, culture would be to have a look at someone like Finland. So you are Finnish. Was your mother Finnish? No, your mother was late Norse, and you were Norse. Okay, so maybe they do convert. I don't know. You you are Finnish. Now, there is a chance that you were just educated that way, but you ended up being Finnish despite the fact that neither of your parents were. Uh, here? You are Norse? You're just Norse Norse? Okay. So obviously, uh, well, what's the local cult? Uh, I should go, what's the local culture? Yeah, so you didn't convert to local culture. Uh, I'm assuming local culture is Lithuanian. Yep, that would make a lot of sense. So you're late Norse. Uh, Norse and Lithuanian. So, oh, wait a second. When did we make the, when did the culture, when was the culture made? Or uh, when was the uh, Reformation, I should say? Uh... Ooh, where would we find out when we reformed? Maybe we'd have a look at our legend library? That's a new high king, but it would be right at the same time. I'm just thinking here, if it's 60 years... There is a chance that this person was actually just simply alive, at which point they would have converted to the culture when we did the culture uh, merge. Yeah. Oh no, there we go. 1002, I was looking at religion for some reason. Yeah, so 1002. So they were just alive when we did the culture merge. So never mind. They just converted culture because um, th uh, when you merge cultures, there's a, like, these many vassals will convert with you decision. So that's fine. Uh, you're late Norse. Again, you didn't convert. 
You're late Norse. You're you're also late Norse. You're late Norse. Yeah, so the only one we've seen that which might have converted is Finland. They might have converted to Finnish. But that might also be because she married someone who's Finnish. And I think there is a marriage option for converting culture as well. I say not very sure because I don't convert culture that often. Anyway, um, I still think it's a good idea to convert the culture. We will do that next time we do it in like three years. Yeah, so we'll convert Finland probably because that looks like that's actually going up by a reasonable amount. But we'll have a look at what kind of bonuses are on whatever province we're going to convert next. I just like the idea of getting rid of entire uh, cultures. Because if we can get rid of entire cultures, then they, they go off of my list of cultures which can join populist factions. Which is useful. Right. Uh, let's figure out what we're doing today. We're befriending you because we're trying to get some more people to vote for our daughter, even though everybody is voting for our daughter. Oh, another good suggestion. Uh, not going to do anything with it right now. When we have excess money, we should give our excess money to our daughter. One, because that excess money will become ours when we become our daughter. But two, it means that she can spend it on doing things, which will then increase her prestige and her piety and all that sort of stuff. So, potentially useful. Uh, we have an inspiration project going on right now, which in three months we will get something out of that. Anything else? We need a successor to the Night's Night. Okay. We have a successor to the Night's Night. Wonderful. That seems good to me. He seems very, very good, apart from the stutter, which we, is not ideal. Seems fine. Um, Anything else in here? Not really. Let's have a look at our courtiers, do a little check. So we're going in here, we're going not married. Right, and then we'll just do a quick check of who it actually needs to be married. So like you're infirm, you probably don't need to be married unless we're dragging someone into the court, which we might want to do. You were just a guest. Can we ask you to leave? You're not very good. We cannot ask him to leave. Okay. You're the new guy. We're also not going to marry you off. Can we ask you to leave? Also appears to be a no there. Let me double check. That's a no. So these two cannot be... These two cannot leave, which probably means they were sent here by someone else. Uh, we don't want to marry you off. Realistically, we only want to marry you off if we're getting something out of it, which we're probably not. So that means we are looking at these three for marrying off. Okay. Let's start with you. Let's just see if we're getting anybody into our court here. So if I have a look for prowess, um, yeah, so all of these people are people I've already dragged into court. We get another 29 prowess guy into our court. Okay. Oh, we can get a giant into our court? A giant organizer? All right. I'll get this guy into our court. That's fine. There's no chance of any children, but that seems pretty good. Right. So that's that one. Uh, you want to have a look for somebody who has inheritable traits. Do you have any inheritable traits yourself? No. Okay. Genius, 31. I see genius. I don't need to look any further. You will be absolutely fine. Let's grab another genius into our court. Low chance of children, but who cares? You know. If we get one, we get one. If we don't, we don't. You. Uh, same kind of deal here. We're just looking in here. We can maybe try and get Albino into our court. That's a kind of interesting trait. Gives you extra dread to start with. Also lowers opinion, but uh, is kind of interesting. But also beautiful is a great trait, so... Yeah, let's go for that marriage here. That seems fine. And then this guy. We got any other great traits that can be brought in? You know what I should have a look for? I should see if we have any other geniuses. Geniuses? Nope. Okay. Now I'll just do a quick skim. I see a couple of intelligence in there. I think that's our best trait. Let's go for intelligent. Right. How about you? You seem fine. Yeah. Try and get some more intelligent people in here. This is just about uh, looking for the next generation of characters here. Just get a bunch of inheritable traits in, see what we can get out of it. Uh, we could potentially have got rid of this courtier, although they are a genius, so they're probably pretty good at some things. Although maybe infirm means they can't actually do anything else, but anyway. Maybe I should have got rid of them. Uh, I possibly could have got rid of Tyke as well, I just realized he's not actually a commander, but okay. 
that's fine. Uh, let's not worry about it too much. Uh, we'll wait for that those to go through and have a look at children afterwards. Uh, that's a lot of text, but basically someone won a war against someone else. Okay, cool. So now we have these people who are either just random guests or are not marrying, which is fine. Uh, we're then going to have a look at... Um, I guess we should have a look at all first and just see if we have anybody who's a useless pairing. So you're my spy master. Are you somebody we want to keep as a spy master? You got 17 intrigue. We could replace you with somebody who's got 25 intrigue and likes me a lot more. He's the guy that I let go, right? He's the guy that I imprisoned so I can get a hook on him and then let him go. Yeah, you could be my spy master. Which now means that you are my champion. Uh, is that because you're in line to something? Why are you my champion? Ah, you're in line to the uh, champion of conquests. Um, is there somebody better? Yeah, Guillermo is much better. We just have a look. Yeah, he's also younger. Colbjorn is also better. You're also better. Okay, let's put in my 21-year-old nephew. He seems like a younger person for this job. Which now means, if we go through this a little bit here, back to this guy, you, uh, with 17 prowess, uh, that's you, no longer need to be a champion. You are not very good. You are hail. But I think I could probably uh, get away with asking you guys to leave. Oh, you do have children. Are the children any good? Okay, actually your son is pretty good. Okay, you get to stay here because of your son. Right. That's fine. Next up, Ingbjorg. Married to champion. That's fine. Here, court physician. I mean, obviously you get to stay. Colbjorn seems to have reasonably high prowess, which probably means he gets to stay. You're my champion at 17, so you must be the one who is the developmental champion's heir. Are you the best? A husband could, in theory, do this job a little bit better. Uh, he is 25. Yes, I think he would be better at this. So I'm going to deassign uh, Pilksoff again. And I'm going to assign... Oh, I need to go down to 18 uh, prowess. Where are we? Yes, our husband can take that role. That seems reasonable. Okay. Anything else in here that you'd like to tell me about, game? Oh, exchange hostages. Okay. Ah, you're a genius. Okay, you get to stay in the court because she's a genius. That's fine. Although that might have been literally the marriage I... Is that the marriage I literally just did? I think it is. Okay. Well, that's fine, I guess. Uh, anyone else? Courtier and our player heir. That seems fine. They have a bunch of children who are both geniuses. That seems good. We have Tyke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already been through you. you you're my brother-in-law. You're my half-sister and a claim knight. Okay. Yes, we went through that one already. Probably should have asked them to leave court or married them off outside the court. That's fine. Seeing a lot of inheritable traits here. Okay, I think we're. I think that's fine. We have a lot of new traits in our court, which I think is a better situation than we had before. Now I just want to do a quick children check, and the children check is just checking that they have a guardian. We don't really care who the guardian is, it's just if they're above six, they should have a guardian. I didn't do Oster. Let's do Oster as well. So we have you. You need a guardian to teach you about learning. That is going to be you for now. That gives you a purpose in life. You need a guardian who's going to teach you about diplomacy. That can be you. Wonderful. All right. Then we want to go to adults who are Oster. And just double check that they all have a purpose in life. You. Yep, that's fine. You... Okay, I wouldn't say that you have a purpose in life, really. Um, yeah, although I suppose you are passing down your trait, which is interesting. 
Uh, why are you not in our court? I don't know. Okay, well, whatever. That's fine. Uh, nephew here. Isn't married off. We should marry him off. Let me just double check. Is anyone else not married? Oh, just our nephew. Okay. Well, let's see if we can find a Herculean person to marry him to. Or it would actually, in this case, be... Uh, um, uh... Amazonian, which is Herculean. I don't know why I decided to try and go for that one. Uh, okay, she is already landed, so that's not going to work. Any geniuses want to marry him? Nope. Um, let's go for not a ruler. And just see what we got. Oh, intelligent. We try and marry you to this person. That seems reasonable. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's send that one through. Uh, it was asked, by the way, why we don't educate our own heirs in order to get the uh, traits that we're after. The reason I'm not educating my own heirs currently is that you get a huge bonus to the level of this trait if you have an education... If you have... Not an education trait. If you have a, um, a physical um, intelligence trait such as genius, such as intelligent, such as quick, or if you have shrewd. We have neither of those traits, so we are not a good educator for our children because they're going to end up with a bad education trait. Now, you might argue that some of these traits are more valuable than the actual education trait that you get, but I want them to have good education traits. Uh, what we ideally want is to have if we want to have our main character educate our potential heirs, is we want them to have a good uh, trait, like genius, and then we can start adjusting the things so we get both bonuses, like we're able to choose uh, their uh, personality and their um, more likely to get a good education trait, but yeah, that's not our current situation. One or two, or two generations down, yeah, like this generation, maybe, we've got intelligent. That's not a bad trait for this. It's not as good as genius, but it's not bad. But another generation down, if we were doing it with this character, that would be fantastic. We would be able to choose everything uh, for any of their uh, children. But, yeah, we're just a little bit away from doing that. Right, uh, what is next? Just unpause a second, let things continue. You've returned home from the Varangian Guard. That's why we didn't know what was happening with you. Because you literally just returned home about two seconds ago. Okay. Oh! My lady. My beneficiary, uh, Gadir, announces his arrival in a surprisingly loud voice. He proudly holds a packet securely wrapped in cloth. I return from the step with an artifact from my journey. I take the bulky bundle in my hands loosen the cords before peeling layer after layer of fabric. Inside is an artifact unlike anything I've seen before. Gadir smiles proudly. The legendary sword of the Hun chief Attila, Scourge of Gods, also known as the Sword of Mars. This is magnificent. Okay, so we got the Sword of God, uh, which is a pedestal item, not a sword. But interesting. Very cool. Um, well... That's definitely good. Okay. The Sword of God. It gives us natural dread. It gives us renown. gives us a very tiny amount of prestige. Uh, I assume that that's... Oh, that's per month. So, I was going to say I assume that that works the way that the other prestige one did, where it's when you get it. But if that's per month, uh, then it must be based off current dread. Okay, and then court grandeur bonus. Not that prestige really matters that much, but anyway. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Cool. So we have that. Did I ever actually... Go, um, I was just remembering. Did I ever actually do anything in here? No, I never actually bought this thing. Because I was waiting for prestige. And then we uh, forgot about it. Yeah. Uh, what was the one I was going to do? Uh, the adoption one, right? Uh, noble adoption? Characters of this culture are able to offer adoption to children who are not directly related to any rulers. I think that was what we were looking for. Yes. I've now forgotten if there was something else. Back of my brain has something there. Mm, it has about 10 seconds to come out. Nope. Alright, we'll choose this. I think it was 4,000 was the cost. So yeah. Let's grab that while we're here. 
Uh, another question was, why are we not switching our marshal from men only to equal? Uh, the reason is essentially performative honor. If we do that, it makes shield maidens worthless, which means that when we do that, we want to at the same time have switched performative honor to something else, right? We want to have switched it to, um, well, basically anything else. Probably something that gives us this same kind of bonus just without the shield maiden thing written at the top. But uh, anyway, that's essentially the reason we haven't done it. There's no other particular reason why. It's just um, we haven't. So that will now get there in 27 years. Wonderful. Okay. Um, next thing's next. What are we doing? I'm pausing. Yeah. Achievement one of a kind in patronage. What's, oh, that's for the... Um, you get a unique item and in patronage is uh, sponsor someone. Okay, that's fine. Right, marriage is going through. Let me just double check. That wasn't a different nephew, right? Uh, no, that was not a different nephew. I just wanted to double check that one there. That's okay. Um, it's all fine. Where's the disease? Disease is far away. Okay. Cool. Befriend the dance. Uh, we are getting closer because of a dance to being friends with this person. Okay. Wait, are we friends with that? Wait, did that just make us friends? It seemed to cancel the friendship thing. Yeah, it cancelled the thing. I said we are closer to being friends with this person. Okay. Uh, I've lost them. I should have read it more. I just assumed it was another event in the line. Let's go back in here. It was this person, right? Who I was trying to be friends with? Yeah, so why can I not befriend her? I guess it just didn't work. Oh. But we got closer to being friends with her. It just didn't actually make us friends with her. Okay. Well, that's kind of useless for the purposes of what I was doing. Of just trying to see whether the friendship um, actually gave you a tangible bonus here. Right. Driffa. Hello. I would like to be friends with you, Driffa. Because you're second on the list and you're easy to find. There we are. Right. More Byzantine coughs spreading. Purchase a truce. Denmark would like us to uh, would like to pay us two hundred gold for a truce. All right. Also, I love that this is Sweden now. Like literally, that I, I thought this was also Sweden, but no, Sweden is one singular province just hidden inside of Denmark. <laughs> okay, and they're like, I'm a king. Okay, sure. Like, they even have water access. They can access this tiny little lake and pretend it's the sea. Anyway, um, that's fine. Inspired person can be sponsored. Uh, you're legendary and you want to make great armor. How much do you cost? 450. Yeah, I had a look at that before, didn't I? And I went, absolutely not. <laughs> that's way too much. Okay, cool. Um, I almost feel like it's time to expand again. Uh, I, I kind of feel like it might be. We do have a little bit of money, though, so maybe I, I'm just waiting for these to finish. Maybe we do a small war somewhere. Just get some land which uh, makes sense to grab. I just don't really know what I want. Can maybe grab Burgeslagen if we wanted to? Or something like that, but I'm not really that bothered about it. Um... I forgot, we still have this tiny, tiny, tiny little bit of land there for uh, excursions. If we could try and get further over here, try and get it so that people aren't outside our diplomatic range. That could be cool, grab some more of this land. Uh, so did I grab all of Permia? I did, right, and that's what I gave you. Yeah. We could move into Siberia here, potentially. Grab some land there. Um, or we can make our way down. But yeah, I kind of like the idea of just grabbing this bit of land at the top. Okay. I was also just... I, I saw Mongolia there, but that is obviously not the uh, Mongolian invasion starting. It would have given us a pop-up. So what's your one? You're warring against someone for somebody's claim on the Kingdom of Yukra. Could I just declare for the Kingdom of Yukra as well? I could conquer a duchy. Oh, that, that that's not bordering. Oh, oh, look at that. 
because this is an impassable terrain. So that's actually not a border. Oh. Okay. So maybe I want to grab some of your land. Maybe some Kimmick land first. If we were going to grab that land at some point, Kimmick would make a better one because um, it would let us get closer to their capital. Yeah, who are you allied with? You're allied with the other guys. Okay. Volga, Bulgaria. You have some allies, apparently. Yeah, you're allied with... Oh, with the... Um, Mordvinia. Okay. Interesting. And yeah, maybe we'll go to war with Kimmich. Hmm. Yeah. There's some of these claims. You have claims on a lot of this. Oh, okay. No, I was thinking just like a conquer uh, duchy or county. Conquer duchy. Yeah, maybe for the, these two bits of land there. I guess there's a nice border of these guys. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Just a little, just a little war. Keep us uh, fresh. Sure. Seems good. Um. I don't think that we need to do anything other than men at arms here, though. So let's let's just do troops over here. Raise all men at arms. Somebody is possibly to kill my nephew Orvar. Okay, I'm not sure why, but somebody is. What's this? You want to give me a pelt? All right. Um, do we need the pelt? Probably not. Uh. Why is that still popping up? There we go. Let's reset. Zoom out. <laughs> there we go. Now it's not doing the tooltip over the top of the buttons. Uh, yes, we can put the pelt up. All right. I mean, it's not very good, but it gives us two court grandeur. I mean, it's okay. We now have a natural court grandeur above level six, which is nice. Okay. Cool. Raise our troops. Let's go to war. Um, yeah, I think we're happy with this. Anything in here that we need to do? Not really. Clear out those. People are arriving. Notable guests. Head over this way. Call to war. Uh, Mordavina wants me to join a war against Oghuz. A holy war for the chiefdom of Uzden. Or, or of Uzen. Alright. I mean, like, that's a little bit of a bigger war there. Um... Yeah, okay. That's fine. Love to catch these troops if we could. You're just going to run away from me, huh? Okay, says we're going to catch him here. Now it doesn't think we're going to catch him. Let's continue going to this province. Now go. Got him. Aha. Okay, you want me to duel you for an artifact. You've got 18... Uh, prowess we have 43 I accept all right in the middle of this battle I'm dueling this person probably for the shiny stone all right we're gonna go high low okay form was good his is formidable we're gonna go high no with our um yeah with our shield maiden trait there we go ours was excellent his was incredible we're gonna go high low again Excellent, incredible. Strike power repost is high medium. We won. Fantastic. Aspiring Blade Master went up even more. And we didn't gain any more trait experience in foot because we're already uh, maxed out. All right. I got to keep my shiny stone. Wonderful. I knew it was going to be for the stone. Right. Is that Oghuz or is that... Who, who are you? The Chepa Jarldom. Are you in the other war? No, I think you're just hostile. I don't think that you're actually at war with me. I think you're just hostile. Wait, the Chepa Yarldom are my vassal. I'm, I'm a hostile to my own vassal? Did we declare for the same thing? You've declared for the High Chiefdom of... Oh, you declared for the next one along. So they've declared for this one. Alright, so we're hostile, but actually like not that much hostile. We want different things. That's okay. I suppose that people are being unfaithful to each other. Because that was my only option. How could Emperor... Oh, it was my husband who was being unfaithful. With this person. Shocking. 
How could Emperor Guthrither share his bed with another? How could he betray me like this? Perhaps they'll never know his reasons, but there seems to be no doubt about his guilt. Um, she will become my rival. Okay. Well, um, let's see. He's going to be more likely to do this if he cares for us. We're going to say, let this folly end. Yes. Let's see what happens. I do not deserve your forgiveness, but I'll do everything in my power to change that. I swear on my love, I swear on my life. So we gain a strong hook, which means he can't act against us. We lose the unfaithful opinion bonus towards him, which doesn't matter because it's a player. So play the play player's opinion doesn't towards someone else doesn't matter. And then they stop being lovers. However, we are now rivals. Now, you're my court physician. This is a little awkward. Yeah. Um... I can pardon her. I could imprison her. You know what? I'm going to send her a gift. Which does lower my stress, which is nice. But then, because she likes us more, I can imprison her more easily. Which is always weird. Right, good. Uh, we're now going to... Um, banish you. Yeah. Be gone. I get my 70 gold. And she is banished. So she's somewhere else, he's still in our court, and he's happy with us because we didn't kill his wife. Right, or at least he's neutral with us over that matter. Hey, we finished something in Novgorod. Wonderful. So we've now finished the first level here. Now increase our holding taxes a little bit if I upgrade it and get a little bit more knight effectiveness. Let's do that. Okay, cool. Where are we? Back over here? Back over here? Right. We're about to attack in. They're running away. That's absolutely fine. We're already maxed out on battle war score. So we're purely after siege war score here. So three months left. Cool. I became friends with Driffa. Wonderful news. The only reason we wanted to become friends with Driffa was purely out of uh, experimentation. So, I trust the judgment of a ruler I like went to 150. So it gives you an extra 50 in here, I think, right? I need to find... You You have 97 opinion of me. Yours is 100. Yours is 150. So it does give you an extra 50 onto them, uh, them voting for you. So if we see anybody on this list below 50 in the red, we can get them onto our side. Uh, are you the one that I've already... I think you, you must be one that I have uh, forced to vote for me. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I don't see any... Oh, you're right, there you go. So you are below 50. So if we become her friend, she will vote with us. So this is Finland. Okay, cool. There is an actual thing that we can action off of that. You're going to attack me? Oh, wonderful. Okay. Well, I destroyed you. Uh, we completely destroyed them. How much was that worth? Six, uh, that was worth 166, I think. Yeah, seems pretty good. Right, uh, our level of dedication to our faith went up when our religious icon, some more opinion with our vassals. Wonderful, let me just clear out that uh, list there a little bit. Enemy banner, do we want this banner? Uh, no, I am going to destroy it. Okay, then I'm also just going to have a look at the prisoners I picked up. Anyone who we can we can ransom, I'm just going to ransom back for some money. There we go. Let's see how that goes. Saint, I think that's just reaching the highest level of that. That's okay. Okay, we got our ransom money. Nothing happened in here. That's fine. That might have been the artifact from the event. It might give it to you and then destroy it. So that's probably what happened there. I don't think you're good enough. You can be converted and you can leave. Convert and leave. Convert and leave. Okay. That's fine. So we'll let them all go. Love to see it. Child of my dynasty. Ring Godass. Alright, that's definitely a new name. Hey, we've got some new names coming in. You know what I think the problem is? I think a lot of the characters who we were complaining about the similar names, I think they happened before the culture merge. Because the culture merge was only 32 years ago. 
and the culture merge has actually added in a lot of new names to the name pool because it's not just the Norse names, but it's also the uh, the Lat the Latgalian names as well. They're both in that pool now. So, yeah, we should see a lot more uh, name variety as we go on. I gained the trait Eager Reveler. Why? I mean, okay, I gained the trait Eager Reveler. Oh, because the Legendary Palace was finished. Oh, okay. Okay, that's cool. I also got more prisoners. Nice. Uh, so, Legendary Palace and Osel. So, this should be giving us some extra scheme success chance, legitimacy, some extra opinion, some extra taxes, and some extra holding taxes, and extra development growth. Wonderful. Just double check I haven't missed either of those. Nope, that's fine. Uh, okay, cool. Where are we? Ah, wrong war. <laughs> there we go. A poetic friendship. Mm. Yeah, no, I'm not going to read the poetry. Uh, I'm going to keep the poetry for myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me just keep that poetry nice and close. Ivar, my grandson. Okay. I mean, I guess I might as well use it. It's 2% tax. It's for only some vassals. I was going to say it's almost nothing. It was 0 0.2, which, to be honest, is a lot more than I thought it would be. But, yeah. Um, I guess because we have nothing better, we might as well keep it there. Dynastic Kinslayer. Did you go ahead and, like, execute someone again? Yeah, you executed someone again. You're pardoned. There we go. Right back in here. I, I do feel like executions should probably not fall under the dynastic kinslayer. There is a difference between like plotting to murder someone and executing them. Our sister died. She was gout ridden. Oh, okay. Uh, holding is occupied by my foe in the holy war. So that's over here. Yeah, okay. Whatever. Not my problem. Uh, your neighbor has lost in a holy war against your vassal for the duchy of Upland. Oh, okay, so we now have Oplands now, right? which I'm fairly certain used to be part of Norway. Looking at that. Also, I love how Denmark is just expanding. They're taking over the entire uh, northern coast here, like uh, of mainland Europe. Interesting. Um, yeah, they have a very strong hold on that area. Ireland also has Frisia, or, or what used to be Frisia, but Frisia is now also uh, migrating. Yeah. So what, what duchy is that? So it's like Utrecht, Frisia, and then a little bit of West Westphalen. Oh, yeah, and a little bit of uh, Ang Angria over here. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely expanding. I did notice Egypt, by the way, is also expanding a little bit down here. But uh, land down here is a little bit um, misleading. If you actually have a look at it, you'll see that, uh, yeah, if it does this... These are the actual provinces. These are the actual provinces. This is just sand. There's nothing here. This is all impassable terrain. So although it's like Egypt holds so much land. Yeah, but they don't actually hold this land. They hold like four provinces. Right? And then that allows the land in between to change to their color. So anyway. Uh, unlike up here, like we see everything's filled in all over the place. Yeah, so it's slightly different. Right, where are we? Back to our siege. We have won the siege. We now have ticking war score because we can control the war goal. Um, I don't know. You're not really good enough to recruit, probably. Yeah, I think I'll gain a... You're not going to give me a weak hook. Uh, I don't want to lose dread. Guess you can just stay in my prison. Oh, anyone want to pay money for you? No? Okay, convert. You? Uh, convert. You? Convert. Uh, you got any money? No? Can't ask you to convert. Why don't you renounce your claims? Alright, then leave. Okay. Uh, let's split up our army into two. And just split up. Only thing we're trying to do here is resupply slightly. Okay, new diplomacy perk. Uh, thoughtful is really good. Increases opinion from uh, gifts. We probably don't need to go too much further into uh, diplomacy. 
Yeah, let's maybe grab Thoughtful and think about it a little bit, because um, I think we kind of have everything we want in here. Yeah, I don't really want any of this. Um, stewardship we could go back into if we wanted to. Maybe go down to Centralization. Maybe try to go to Avarice. Intrigue was something I was thinking about to potentially get Truth as Relative, which would allow us to fabricate uh, hooks. However, we don't need to because they were already voting for who we want them to vote for. We could go to Learning. Learning would potentially allow us to get to Scholar. This one is completely pointless. Maybe do Whole of Body if we want to live longer, but we don't necessarily want to live longer. I think we have to just go back to Stewardship and try and earn money. I think that that's probably our best option right now. Yeah. Let's just go in here and try and get down to Avarice. Okay. Cool. Clear those out. Was there something else I wanted to build in uh, here, by the way? Could build more blacksmiths, increase our knight effectiveness. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get more blacksmiths. Right, where are we? Over here. Right. Just resupply a second. Okay. This is fine. Uh, Four months and we win the war. Somebody is scheming against Orvar. Who's scheming against Orvar? I guess Mali. Uh, yeah, throw him in jail. Okay. Why don't you um, get converted and leave? There we go. Right, he's now somewhere else but my uh, religion. Merge. To see an army coming over. I think we should just merge just to be safe. Notable guest has arrived. With many, many claims. Okay, that's nice to know. They're coming in here from dust. I guess we'll spend the money to get disease recovery. It's just generally good. I'll fight your army. I don't really know. All right, well, let's wait for them to move. They're already locked in. Wonderful. People are sleeping with other people. Was that event? All right, we defeat the army. We got some money for uh, wiping them out. That was worth 44 gold, that was. Wonderful. We captured the leader of Bashkiria. This was 157 gold. It was like a 200 gold um, thing there. Wonderful. Anyone else in our prison? Just the one guy who we can't get rid of. Right. Uh, we will enforce our demands. I guess we could also demand a hostage or something. They, they would say no. I do like the idea of just um, adding on that if we're going to have adoption be a thing. Just like, no, okay, give me that give me that child. That one looks promising. We'll, we'll adopt them in. Although I guess they'd have to be the uh, child of... They'd be related to a ruler. But then I guess also what you could do is you could uh, take all of the ruler's land and then they would no longer be related to a ruler and then you could adopt them. Interesting. Anyway, uh, carrying on. Enforce demands. Yeah. So this guy became my vassal. Uh, I'm going to send you a little gift. A new vassal. You want to convert? Not really. Okay. Uh, I'll ask you anyway. Then I can just take your land if you don't want to convert. Right. Uh, you seem to be doing great in this war. I don't really need to go over there, but uh, sure. We'll split up our army into two parts. Let's see. Hey, he converted. It makes our life so much easier. Uh, I can't ask you to convert, but it would be nice if you did. Anyway. Right. Just wait for us to resupply. Oh, I need to split up again. Okay. Okay. There we go. Do a little resupply here. New hybrid culture. Cro uh, Kreto Karin uh, Karantanian. Okay. Arrange betrothal. Pinolu Pinales of uh, Cantabria, who is Astor Leonese and uh, unreformed Norse faith over there. And my random courtier who doesn't look that good. Hmm. I accept Beyond Random Courtier in four years. Okay, cool. Right, well, this seems like a good point to end the episode. We won a nice little bit of war. We got a little bit of extra land. It looks like our um, 
or more Divinas. Gonna get a little bit of land over here. Just to sit there. Only, it's only for a single chiefdom, although it's a large looking chiefdom. So yeah, we get that. We've finished. Uh, oh, we finished the other thing as well, the Grand Temple. Oh, wonderful. So that is now giving us um, even more knight effectiveness. Piety, monthly renown, levy reinforcement rate, and control growth just across the board. And extra development growth in this holding. And extra holding tax. And extra development growth. I mean, this is good. development growth is currently 1.2 in this one, which is quite a high number for development. We've got a lot of bonuses going on. Yeah, fantastic. you love to see it. Uh, cool. Um, what does that put our knight effectiveness to? 332% effective. That's, that's not bad. Not bad. Okay, well, cool. With that, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.